Hello again, and welcome to part two of my ukulele odyssey, my little experiment where I approach a new instrument, the ukulele, um, which I never tried to play before, and I share with you my own personal experience of how I approach a new instrument, how I listen to the instrument, how I learn the instrument as I go along, how I memorize what works and what doesn't, um, as well as um, give you an inside peek into my improvisational approach, um, which often leads to really surprising results that you can try yourself. So I filmed the first video yesterday and today I kept tinkering around with the ukulele and it got out of tune. So what happened was I I chose not to go online and see what a ukulele's tuning is. Um, and I just started tinkering around with the pegs and I tuned it to a seventh chord. Okay, so I, um, I pulled out my tuner and apparently it was A, okay, A, E, C sharp, and G. Now, I have no idea if uh, this is close to a normal tuning for ukulele or not, because again, I'm experimenting here. Um, so I heard this and I thought, okay, a seventh chord. So it's kind of like an open tuning. And on the guitar, open tunings usually work with uh, either the first and third fret or the second and fourth fret. Sometimes the second and third fret, of course. Um, so immediately I gave it a try. Okay, and it's the same note there. Okay, but hey, the one works. So 310 works on all three strings here. Okay, and it gives me sort of a classical thing. Okay, so immediately. I get an interesting sound, which I can play around with. And on the on the lowest string physically, uh, where the bass uh, where the bass uh, note would usually be on the guitar, I have this high note. And the one is a chromatic, so two is the is the natural note here. So I get a chromaticism. Okay, and I can also play with three zero one two. Okay, to get that jazzy sound. Okay, uh, it also works as a classical um, line in a classical framework. But let's see what we get. So I'm just adding a note. Okay, we have the seventh chord, and if I add one on the third string, okay, I get this. Move. Yeah, I'm just arpeggiating, adding one extra note um, on a random string and going on from there. Now, because I have the same frets, one and three, it's really easy to create a line. The difficult thing is to finish a line. It's difficult to, to find where it's supposed to finish because I have this, okay, again, this top string or bottom string, okay, I have no frame of reference here, okay, because it's a high note, uh, it's not a bass note, and it throws me off. But I use this throwing off, this disorienting feeling to just continue the line. And wherever it ends, it ends. So what I get is kind of a never ending line. And if I can find a place to finish, then I stop there. But until I find it, I just keep going.
Okay, so the first string can be a finishing uh, note, but the real finishing note here is one on the third string. So now I know this. Okay, but the two on the fourth, on the bottom string relative to the guitar, is the same note as the first string. So I kind of uh, memorize, I kind of press Control S to save it in my mind. So this is where I'm aiming. I'm just playing stuff and when I want to finish, I either play one on the third string, two on the fourth, or, or the first string open. So let's see how this goes for me and then we're gonna start harmonizing. Everything I just discovered. Now, um, granted, I'm not discovering it in real time because I did tinker around with it earlier today, but I didn't play this. I was just playing around. I didn't memorize any line. I'm just trying to randomly play a sequence of notes. And whatever comes, I just keep playing. I jump between strings and I play. Okay, different arrays of notes. Okay, different sets of strings together to create rhythm. And then just add a finger or two on each string. Okay, now because the third fret of the third string is the same as the open second string, Instead of playing, I add the one on the second string, and then I get this. Okay, and this is a is is a lot of tension, and then it wants to resolve itself. And even if you don't finish, you still create interesting harmonies just by putting two fingers on the fretboard, just randomly. one and one on strings one and three you get this which is a completely different chord hmm okay so if we get zero and one on strings one and three we get <laughs> we get sixth harmonies or something really close to it. but I think it's sixth Of course it is, it's C sharp and A. But again, this is really disorienting. Again, because of the, 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 the fourth string. But if this is the sixth, then we can't really... Let's try. No, this is not a sixth. So it means that if we want... Okay. You have a major sixth and a minor sixth. And on the guitar, it's on strings, let's say it's on strings one and three, you have either the same fret 
or one fret apart. Um, um, the first string, let's say, on seven, so the third string would be on eight. You can't do this here, so it means that it would be the other way around. If the first string is on seven, then the third string would be on six. Yep. So we get the, the same string or on the third, uh, the same fret or the third string down one fret. This is great information. So let's find the scale. strings one three then one and one then three and three then it's five and four seven and six eight and eight now let's stop there and then for the harmonic minor you can use four and three what happens if I add the the the, the D string it's not a D string the the fourth string. Hmm. Confining, so. Let's try the open second string. Still doesn't work for me. The open third string. This works better. I'm just adding a note between each harmony. But you don't have to. strings one and two because if sixths work then thirds would probably work too. So it's a zero and one on strings one and two, one and three, three and five, five and six, seven and eight. So now you have all the tools needed to create a full composition out of this. Now I'm going to change the harmony from a seventh to a major seventh. And then you'll see how everything changes. Everything. Right now we're in a minor framework. We're playing in a minor sound, minor atmosphere. So I will improvise something for you and then we're gonna switch atmospheres to a major 7. Try to pop to to bar anything. Okay, if you bar the third fret, it creates this. If you bar the fifth, you have to be really careful. If you bar the seventh. Wow. Wow, that's a great sound. If you bar the seventh fret and then open it again. OK, 
Okay, so of course I could go on all day and actually find out the chords and everything, um, but this is not about teaching you something concrete. This is about showing you my my exploration method. All right, so now let's. Um Now it's A major 7, it's not A7, it's A major 7. I just changed the, the fourth string to, um, to G sharp instead of G. Is it in tune? Immediately it's a lot less intimidating. It's smooth, it's calming. So now we have two and four, if I'm not mistaken. Let's check that out. Ah, no. We still have one on the third string. Okay, and one and three on the, th the fourth, but I was right about the first two strings. On the first three strings, you have two and four. So you can play around with that. And the third string bothers me. Well, there's nothing you can do. So I just won't play it. Bothers me right now. Maybe maybe if I maybe if I use it as a harmony, it would work. If I play two two one, maybe two two one one. Yeah, two two one one would be a chord. Same for four four three three. Okay, so that's a tool. I, I will not be using the one on the third string as as a soloing note, but I will be using it as a harmonic note. Okay, but the one, but the zero one three on the fourth works. Let's say have the same trick with the seventh bar. <laughs> no, because it was a seventh chord before, so it was a really, really dominant sound. But now it's a major seven. Major sevens are a completely different harmonic world. So um, I'm again, I'm using this awkward uh, angle, camera angle, so you can see the ukulele and what I'm playing. It's no longer a So 
basically it's the pentatonic scale. It's the pentatonic scale. It's, it's the pentatonic scale on strings one and two. Zero, two, four, seven, and nine. But in a major seven framework, it doesn't act as a blues scale. It acts like it, it acts more more as a as a mode, as, as as an exotic sound. Okay, now, because I used this, the zero one, on the third string as, as an ornament, as a kind of, of, a, of an Eastern thing, immediately my fingers wanted to play the same sound on all other note arrangements. Okay, with quick pull-offs, quick hammer-ons. You don't have to do it. I will try to forget about it and try to come up with new ideas. difficult to forget something once your mind locks onto it. I'm on four on the third string. found a sound that it likes, I can't let it go. So the only, there, I have two options, to stop playing right now or to keep playing what, what I found. So I just, I'll just keep going. put on a D minor shape and it worked only it's a major chord so what would be a minor chord not this so this yeah okay so if it's a D minor shape let's say two four and three on strings one two and three then for a minor chord you'd have this you'd have a bar on two with four on the second string and okay. I'm not playing the fourth string okay so let, let's not get crazy let's let's stick to the melody at the beginning, 2-2-1-1. Two, two, one, one. Okay, and I'm arpeggiating because I want to hear the notes inside the chord and see if I can do something with them. I don't know. 
but it might work as well. Okay, bar on five with seven on the second string. What about seven? Works as well. If you add seven on the fourth string, you get Good thing I didn't try to yeah. See, if you make a mistake, accidentally play three on the first string, the right note is always next to it on, you know, half a step down, half a step up. So don't be afraid of wrong notes. Sometimes you can get really cool ideas from wrong notes. And just as a side note, you can play two on the third string. Okay, that's a natural note in the scale. Okay, instead of you have two and zero. Okay, zero, two, three. Okay, it's inside the scale. But my ear, for some reason, directed me Okay, to play one on the third string because I was in G uh, in A7 before and my ear still wanted to hear that note and that created the mode. While if I was starting out this video with, if I started this video with the, the A major seven, then I would play the two on the third string. instead of one. And that's the magic of musical exploration. It's all inside the context. And that's why there's no wrong note in music. And uh, it, it always catches me by surprise how beautiful outside notes can be, how beautiful wrong notes can be. So, so this is a lesson for me as well. inside a major seven framework just beautiful that's that's the magic of music remember wrong notes are just modes there's no such thing as a wrong note That's um, that's um, another part of the journey. 
Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I don't know what you're gonna think about this little experiment, but uh, if I if I inspired or helped even one of you, then it's enough for me. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next guitar lesson. Bye for now. Enjoy. <laughs>